Okay, we're going to be breaking down more of Kyle Shanahan's just play calling schemes from the pre-snap motion. And what we're going to see here in one of the very first plays of the game, we are going to see Kyle Shanahan dictate coverage. It's already taken place there through a double kind of pre-snap motion. So the first thing he's going to do is move the tight end out, which is going to rotate coverage away from the opposing side and force these guys into a man. You can see as soon as this tight end comes out the safety is going to come up and we're just going to have just a straight man on the outside but Kyle Shanahan's not done there and you can kind of see he's calling him in you got the back you got the back we can kind of see what's going to happen here but they're not done Kyle Shanahan motions the back out again clearing out another player so now we have two defenders on two defenders out here the ball this is a pre this before they even came out they knew where the ball was going we're going to see just out into the flat to Dante Pettis and you're going to see what that creates is if, if we jump back in a second he's just moving everybody to exactly where he wants to be if we go back to before these uh, pre-stat motions we have these defenders here and he's going to remove two of them just by these motions out okay there's one right there and now we have the man uh, matched up here so the flat defender the under flat defender that could come out and help out for a 3-2 advantage on these wide receivers is removed by the double pre-snap motion and from there you can see as soon as the ball snaps Jimmy's eyes go and you just hit him out there in the edge and of course Dante Pettis did a great job this game two tackles inside the five creating a lot of extra yards on his own all right, here we're going to see a great throw by Jimmy Garoppolo into a super tight window. So you can see where he's going here. This is a timing route that you've got to get it out quick. The You're going to pull the linebacker up with the play action whenever Jimmy turns around. So again, let's step back to the watch the linebacker here reading his run key. As soon as Jimmy turns his back, this guy reads run and steps up, just creating a larger, larger window right here to get into the passing zone. Boom, right there. You see the window. Better get out of it quick because it's going to close down quick. And you got to love the ball placement. One, he is putting it into place to keep his wide receiver safe. If he throws it out in front of him, this guy's going to rip his head off. So he is throwing him open. And again, look at the passing lane that's created. So you can kind of see where he's going to go with that. But by his Hitting the back shoulder, he's going to slow down momentum and keep Debo Samuel safe, which is what we all want. All right. Here what we're going to see is we're going to set up a couple plays here based on the coverage that the Rams decided to play. And I don't really understand this schematically at all, but it's what's called a quarters coverage. You can kind of see right here. All four deep players, and what they do is they just divide the back half of the field, the deep half, into four separate 25% zones. And essentially the idea is we're not going to let anything get behind us. So you can see there's two deep routes here occupying four defenders. Now this was early on in the game. And whenever this happens, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be very, very smart to check the ball down. No need to try to hit one of these guys just because, again, you consider these two defenders underneath and these four over top is going to cause a major problem if you try to force it in here. So what you're going to do is just check down on this play, and that's going to set up a whole lot of plays moving forward. So you just get the check down there, no big deal. But now that was early in the game. If we know that's what they're going to do out of that formation, no big deal. We can take advantage of that. So we're going to motion and again have these two deep plays on the outside, but we had our secret weapon right here. Kyle Shanahan um, puts... George Kittle in the fullback position. Now let's see what's going to happen here. There's no way you can guard against this in quarters coverage. So you can already see pre-snap, every all the safeties are on their heels, rocking back. So from a quarterback standpoint, you see this, you already know coverage. Look at all of the safeties creeping back, creeping back, creeping back. As soon as, I mean, this guy bells before. <laughs> He's scared. I don't understand why, but as soon as that, before the ball snapped, they're all belling. So right away, you know quarters coverage. Again, they're all getting out of their break, and they're getting depth. These two defenders, again, the exact same play we just saw before, they are going to occupy all all four of those guys, which leaves so much room for the fullback George Kittle without anybody anywhere close to him in this whole zone. So 
Throws it past the sticks. Easy completion. But we're not done. George Kittle is a beast. Let's just ruin the Rams persona. And we're going to force you guys to make three trades in one day. Way to go. Awesome schematic play there. Now, here's what we're going to see here. This is just a Brita option. Um, when the linebacker play was terrible for the Rams. And what we're going to see here is just isolate um, our running back on your linebacker. Again, you want to run all these guys out and you want to have four guys playing deep. That's great. What we're going to do is we're just going to clear everybody out and we're going to ISO our running back, who's an amazing pass catcher, against your linebacker. So let's see this play again. And again, everybody's going to clear out. Breed is going to have, they call this an option route because right here, once he breaks down, he has the option to break inside or he can break outside depending on the leverage that he has here. Sometimes it's a predetermined cut, but as you can see here, um, the linebacker seems to be trying to wall off the inside and you can see why there's no replacement help there at all. Now, if this wide receiver or tight end, whoever this is, doesn't matter. If he doesn't press upfield, number 24 here is going to be a flat defender and stay closer to this area. So we run him off. This whole entire play was designed for these two people to get as much space as possible. Breedis breaks off his route, cuts to the outside, and you can see the longer this play goes, the larger this cushion takes place. So if we scoop back, this quarter's coverage is going to count against the Rams again gets out there option route and then watch the separation between everybody else. So now you have your skill position. One of the best running backs in the NFL isolated one-on-one -on -one with a running back and nobody within 15 yards. Well, that's going to come out to a big play in a first down on third and long. This I think is Jimmy Garoppolo's best throw um, in his arsenal, uh, the over under throw. I'm going to show you this from two different angles. Um, it's it's one of those things that you're trying to get windows with the defensive scheme again here. You have your under defenders reading the quarterback. So if it's a flat throw. If the throw comes out too quick, you have guys that can get the ball, a uh, possible interception or a tipped pass. Also, the defensive philosophy here is we're not going to let them behind us. So if you are going to catch this ball, you're going to have to catch it behind these guys and in front of these guys, um, which with the touch passing of Jimmy Garoppolo is it's it's his best skill. I really do believe it's what separates him. So you can see how he catches the ball over. It's kind of like a monkey in the middle type of a mindset and um, over these guys in front of these guys. Now let's see this exact same play, but from the end zone camera. So you can see what Jimmy Garoppolo sees because that all 22 is a little deceiving because when the quarterback steps back and he sees these linebacker, you're going to see this linebacker is making a perfect drop. You wouldn't mind him getting a little bit more depth, but he has to look straight through this guy who was staring him in the eyes you have to get it over him and in front of the next safety behind him which again Jimmy Garoppolo has continued just to be able to put this ball on the money and the fact that he doesn't lead him into the defender there uh, keeping his player safe again uh, Dante Pettis could have had three touchdowns this game he got so close so many times all right, let's jump to the defensive side. This is the first series, the first play. Why did the Rams run the ball down our throat that first drive, and what were the adjustments made? We're going to cover that here. It's just a simple zone with a cut block or a cut back block right here, just cutting off the angle. So the person we need to pay attention to are our defensive tackles, DJ Jones and DeForest Buckner. They're going to get a zone defensive left pull. And um, the offense is going to pull to the right. Now, these defensive tackles, especially DeForest Jones at the uh, DJ Jones at the point of contact right here, he is taught once you get that flat step read, you are to get into the hip pocket and run with maintaining your gap integrity. So you can see right here. DJ Jones is lined up here. So he has to stay on this shoulder as everybody is pulling to the side. So he gets on his horse and runs. He's out of phase now. He turns and runs. However, during this process, you want to stay on the line of scrimmage. DJ Jones could not do this all game. The first four plays of the game were him getting blown off the ball in ridiculous fashion four times in a row. So you can see here. You never want your defensive tackle 
past your defensive end because you see what happens here with this cutback lane. Also, the block here, exceptional job by them. Uh, we do this a lot. That cutback into the zone, the opposite cutback is huge because you see this lane. Uh, they do a great job. They wall off all the defenders, and we have three unblocked defenders, but they're so far out of play that they can't get in and make a play. So nine straight runs on the first drive for a touchdown. Now I want to jump to the very first play after the touchdown drive. This is the adjustment that was made on the defensive side. One, personnel. We now have Solomon Thomas in at the big defensive tackle position. And watch what he does differently. Now, it's a little bit of a different formation, but you're going to get the exact same look up front. You're going to get a zone blocking scheme to the right. Exact same thing. And we've got our cut block cut back blocker coming right here to help seal the lane but notice what DeForest Buckner and um DeForest Buckner is here, sorry, and what Solomon Thomas does over here. Instead of turning and running, they're going to get penetration and stay home. We are not going to chase, and what that does is it just clogs everything up in the middle. And because he gets penetration, he takes two blockers, which means now our, our linebacker is going to come free. So because of this small adjustment of just not turning and running with that zone scheme, getting penetration... It's going to allow, um, one, just to cause a huge mess up front, and the running back has nowhere to cut back. If you remember that cutback lane, it doesn't exist anymore. Watch, just it just gets completely filled, and because he engages these two blockers, there's just nowhere else to go. Now, from a linebacker perspective, again, we're going to see a similar play just to the opposite side. Now, it's a different quarter, so we're behind the other, we're behind the Rams offense. But watch the linebacker fits. Again, we're going to get penetration up front to occupy blockers better. That's going to help cut down, cut back lanes. But you can see right here, there is a cut back lane. However, <laughs> the linebacker is going to do his damn job and step up and make the play. Now, this three to four yard gain, you can kind of deal with that, but much better than the eight and nine yard gains that they were getting on the first drive. So, again, you can see just at all the different levels, everybody getting in. And of course, you got to give props to our defensive end right here, fighting through the double team block coming across. Eric Armstead played his best game as a pro this week. All right, right here I want to talk about Jaquiski Tark keeping outside leverage. This is something he has struggled with tremendously in his career, but this is textbook. So because of the formation, you can kind of see there's no wide receiver off to the side. They've got a bunch trips, bunch uh, coverage over here, just the tight end. So he has a couple responsibilities. One, he is the edge defender, which means he has outside contain. If the ball gets outside, whether through a toss or a reverse, or anything it is this man's responsibility and is also responsible for the end wide receiver right here okay so he's twofold and what happens is you're going to get a run block a pretty decent run sell actually um, with the back uh, with the entire line even the man he's guarding so his eyes this is his under read this is his over read so you're reading this through this both of those things say it's a blocking play running play go get them but he slow plays it, stays at home, which is what you want with your backside defender, and then just runs through the outside leg. Uh, absolutely great tackle for loss against a player that probably weighs 50 pounds more than Tart. But uh, we all know he can hit, but whenever he can stay at home, great things are going to come his way. All right, this is a little bit of an interesting play here because we're going to see Richard Sherman guarding the slot uh, due to the snap motions and things like this. We wanted to see what Richard Sherman could do in the slot and watch him blow up this screen just perfectly. They get a motion over, so now it's just a three-by-one set. We have trips on this side, one by this uh, one wide receiver on this side and as soon as the play you could see him recognize it just a simple pass off where you're going to screen Sherman's man okay and what you're going to say is he's not going to be able to get down to make that play soon enough because he wants to catch the screen and get to the outside where he's got help here he's going to try to reach reach Sherman and block him here sealing him off from the outside so you can see right here this guy's accounted for. 
We have great linebacker pursuit getting here. They have major numbers. One, two, three, four, five blockers against three guys. But Richard Sherman is going to go above and beyond. He's going to stack his blocker, maintaining outside leverage, Okay, which really isn't his responsibility. It's going to be his. But Richard Sherman just... He does two people's job at once. He forces it outside in order to take up enough time to allow his players, the rest of the defense, to step up. Because what happens here is if Richard Sherman presses too soon outside, then you have the wall set up and he cuts inside. If he cuts inside, he's just going to go outside. So what he does is he stacks him up maintaining leverage and forces the screen to slow down. This is a timing route. If he hesitates, if he does any cut move side to side, then all of this shows up in time. A tremendous play by Richard Sherman. He doesn't make the tackle, but he sure as hell made the play. Let's give some love to our big guys up front. This is one of the best plays. You have Eric Armstead and DeForest Buckner, two of the longest, tallest defensive tackles, defensive ends in the NFL, and you're going to try to run the ball at them. I do not understand it. First off, a couple things. One, you're isolated here, and if you were just going to pause this play and say use it for coaching film, you're going to assume the Rams player wins because he has lowest hat there. You're going to assume the Rams play love this because you've got a double team here, one player on each side, and again, low man usually wins. But these two players are freaks. They were top first-round picks for a reason. You can see incredible Hulk mode here. They're going to get separation with those long arms. And again, same thing here. He's going to get separation with his long arm, turn the offensive blocker while maintaining outside leverage. And this guy's just going to go Hulk mode and just power through these two. Just if Buckner didn't get him, Armstead was. And if Armstead wasn't going to get him, then Buckner was. This is why teams can't run against the 49ers. Because you're counting three guys to block two, and neither one of them got blocked. Neither one of them. Look at Buckner. He fights through the double team and is in the backfield. And even if he tries to outrun him speed-wise, uh, not going to get there. Awesome tackle for loss. And again, everybody else shows up, flying to the defense. And if he did get outside, Richard Sherman is there waiting. No problem whatsoever. Fred Warner, our amazing second-year player. You're going to see him here, right here, 54. This is just, it, it's, they're saying we're faster than you. They're leaving him unaccounted for, and they're saying our running back can get to the edge before you. So as soon as this play takes place, just watch the simple, amazing tackle for loss. And again, watch how he's going to maintain his leverage as soon as he pauses and hesitates. He's going to slow down. But if the running back cuts back, this is the cutback linebacker. This is the force linebacker, and you have your safety. That's the alley play. Um, and what I mean by that is we'll see it here just a little bit more clearly. Boom. So a couple things right here. His job is to force. Okay, You've got to force him to cut inside. If he cuts back, you have your cutback safety and or linebacker, but Buckner's doing everybody's job here. And then you have your alley play worst case scenario. So if he stays outside and he cuts it straight up, you've got to have your safety get there. If he cuts back, then you have these guys here. Great job as a force player. He gets to the outside shoulder, which is bad, but he does make the tackle for a tackle for loss. And this is a very similar play, just not as a running play. You're going to see him matched up in man coverage just from a different perspective. You have the running back here. You have Fred Warner here. And it's just going to be, it's not necessarily a screen because you're just blocking with the wide receivers. They're showing a pass set here on the offensive line. It's just, it's a simple just swing pass route. And you're hoping that <laughs> the linebacker isn't going to run the route for your running back. The fact that he got out there so quick, this is a film study approach that shows on the field because he knew the play and pressure is coming. Goff panics. And whenever you look at this right here, you see Goff going into the throw. And he's falling back, which means it's going to float. You have these two guys looking. This should have been a pick six. 
really should have, but uh, Goff kind of recognizes and just chunks the ball out of bounds, and so Fred Warner decides why not just take an extra whack. Uh, you got to hit somebody sometime. Boom. Great play by Fred Warner, and if Goff did try to throw that to the running back, that would have been a pick six to the house. All right, let's give some love to Jimmy Ward. You're going to see big man in here had three fourth down stops by himself. He's playing fourth and one, so everybody's up at the line of scrimmage, and he has man responsibility right here for Robert Woods. Now, watch as he commands. you got DJ Reed who came in because Kawan Williams got injured. Kwan Williams got injured. Watch him tell him exactly his responsibility. He tries to get pushed down, and he's saying, no, that's an eligible receiver. And he is correct because this is the last man on the line of scrimmage. So you can see how he's saying, that's not a damn tackle. Pay attention to here. This is a sniffer back. And because he's off the line of scrimmage, you have eligible, 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 eligible. Okay? So because of that, you can see him telling you, watch him right there. He is eligible. I'm not moving because he's responsible for him. And watch what he can do in the run game. Gets in there. Fights through the block, makes the tackle on his own six inches short of the first down. Just a tremendous play. Um, you, we've always wanted to know what he could do if he stayed healthy, and he's never been able to do so. But his career game as a pro uh, came against the Rams. Here's another fourth down stop, and what you're going to see here is just manned up, fourth down and two. You have Cooper Cup, one of the top wide receivers, the top slot wide receiver probably in the NFL, against our safety and man coverage. The Rams love this matchup, and they're going straight to it. It's their first read. So he's going to run an option route. You go straight into the defender, and he's going to cut in, then cut right back out. Zero space given up by Jimmy Ward. It, he knew this route was coming. Uh, this is all film. You can see he's planning with them. That doesn't make any sense. Great play there by Jimmy Ward.